What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to another short video looking at some basic to intermediate level tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about dynamic range. Now when I started this series of videos I had intended to not get into the technical weeds of the camera. However, a couple of videos ago I posted a video talking about the shutter modes and in that video I mentioned how the uh, shutter mode and drive modes can affect the bit depth the camera operates at. So normally the EOS R5 operates at 14 bits. However, if you switch it to continuous high plus, it operates at 13 bits. And if you switch it to fully electronic shutter, it operates at 12 bits. Now, Without getting too far into the weeds, obviously, if you've been around cameras and you've been around the internet and you've been around the, the discussions involved in it, there is a direct relationship between the bit depth that the camera's ADC is capable of operating at and the dynamic range the camera is capable of recording. Uh, additionally, if you've been around the internet for the last, you know, photographic internet at least, for the last five to seven years, or actually even more than that, you'll probably be aware of sort of how important most people place or how much importance most many people place on dynamic range. And if you've dug into a little bit, you may be aware of that it's not just one number at one value or one ISO that dynamic range changes with the uh, ISO that camera is operating at. So I'm not going to get into the weeds about this too much, but since I brought up bit depth in the previous video, I thought it would be worth at least talking briefly about where and when and how using these shutter, different shutter modes could affect the bit depth or the dynamic range of the images you're recording. So let's jump over to the computer. And we're on, uh, this is the site I prefer to use for my dynamic range or looking at dynamic range. This is photons to photos.net. Uh, I like them over sites like DxOMark because they provide much more granular data. They test at all, um, at all ISOs, not just the full stop ISOs. So they test at all the intermediate ISOs. And if you've, uh, for, at least for Canon cameras, they've had some very odd or interesting behavior at intermediate ISOs in the past, and that doesn't necessarily show up on a full stop only test. Uh, additionally, I should point out that Photons to Photos here uses what they call photographic dynamic range. This is different from engineering dynamic range. So in engineering dynamic range, it's the range from where the signal to noise ratio is zero dB to whatever the maximum uh, or signal to noise ratio the sensor can have. For photographic dynamic range, he caps it at uh, a signal to noise ratio of 20 dB, which ensures that there's going to be some information in the shadows. So by and large, if you're comparing his numbers to, say, DxO's numbers, his numbers are going to be lower because the uh, the photographic dynamic range is raising that bottom cap or it's compressing the dynamic range compared to what engineering dynamic range would be. So anyway, the things that we want to look at or things I want to point out predominantly here are two things. First of all, it's if you notice from ISO 800 on, it doesn't really matter what shutter mode you use. Now, the visual effects or artifacts that come up with using, you know, for example, the rolling shutter artifact in the fully electronic mode or the potential for bokeh problems with fast lenses at high or wide open at high shutter speeds, that still exists. That doesn't go away. We're just looking at dynamic range. But past ISO 800, the dynamic range is basically... It, they're all the same. Like, you know, you can see some differences here. People will make far too much out of essentially noise in the measurements. What we're looking at here is that from 800 on, the camera beh behaves exactly as, you know, regard or the same regardless of the uh, shutter mode or whether you're using continuous high plus or not. What we then want to look at is what happens below ISO 800. So this is down in the ISO 50 to ISO 800 range. And you'll notice that there's three lines here. 
so this blue line up at the top is the R5 in 14-bit shutter mode, you know, using the mechanical or electronic first curtain shutter, not in continuous high plus. The green line here is the same, you know, either mechanical or elect electronic first curtain, but now we're in continuous high plus. And the black line down here at the bottom is the electronic shutter. So these correspond to 14-bit ADCs in blue, 13-bit ADC output in green, and 12-bit ADC output in black. And first of all, what you can see is that, you know, if you're a landscape photographer and you need absolutely the most dynamic range and you're shooting at ISO 100, which is probably where you're going to shoot, you obviously want to use either the first curtain mechanic or the first curtain electronic or mechanical shutter to get the full uh, dynamic range that the camera is capable of producing. So you get he he has a measured uh, a photographic dynamic range of 11.85 EV. Uh, if you go to all the way to the flip side of that and you look at the electronic fully electronic shutter, that's down to 10.44 EV. So you're looking at about uh, 1.4 EV, if I'm doing the math right, I think I am, I was doing it in my head, uh, about 1.41 EV difference between the, or, or stops, difference between the 14-bit and the 12-bit uh, readout modes. Now, the other thing you'll notice here is that it's not consistent across all of the different speeds and in fact once you get past iso 200 that range collapses down to uh something that's much closer to half a stop so it goes from 9.97 in electronic to 10.46 in mechanical that's just under half a stop uh difference and it stays about that range from 200 on so that you're not it's not like because you're shooting in, uh, say, fully electronic mode, you're giving up two stops of dynamic range. The, the worst case is a stop, a little under a stop and a half at ISO 100. Beyond that, it's much less than that. And then, of course, past ISO 800, there is no functional difference between any of the shutter modes with respect to dynamic range. Something else that I want to point out while I'm looking here, although this isn't, or looking at this, although this isn't strictly relevant or specific to dynamic range and bit depths, is that because the camera uses effectively a dual gain um, amplification architecture, the, you see that there is this spike in dynamic range at ISO 400. It's actually slightly better to shoot at ISO 400 than ISO 200. So if you're absolutely trying to eke out the most possible dynamic range and you can't shoot at 100 for shutter speed reasons, 400 is your next best bet, uh, at least if you're using the 14-bit option, so the mechanical or first curtain electronic shutter. Uh, once you start getting to the high speed mode, the difference is virtually irrelevant between 400 and 200. And in the electronic mode, it's ever so slightly worse to be at 400 than 200. But uh, by and large, just something to be aware of if you're that, you know, if, you, like I said, you're shooting a landscape or something and you need to maximize dynamic range and you can't shoot at ISO 100 for some reason. So with that said, I hope you found this tip, for lack of a better word, uh, useful or informative. If you did, please consider smashing that like button. Also consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.